right, so so far we've been looking at um, the Discovering Series Circuit activity, where we were able to look at a series circuit, which is one big loop, um, one path for our electrons to flow down, and um, we have multiple resistors connected in that big loop. And what we were doing is creating an equivalent circuit in which we had one resistor that ends up um, essentially acting and creating the same circuit. So same battery, same current, but now instead of having two resistors like we have on the left, we now only have one. So, so far you've gone through and you've completed the first page of your C discovering series circuit, which is going to be the three circuits that you are working uh, with FET to develop. Now we're going to look at what general conclusions we can draw. And then from there, we're going to start to apply this to various problems. So I'm going to pull up my iPad real quick. Um, when you were going through this process, you should have developed this conclusion for the last problem. So you were going through those three, three problems, but this is one kind of summary piece that we are going to look at. Now, the first thing I want to look at is what we were able to develop as far as the conclusion using our resistors. So notice on the left-hand side for our series circuit, we had three resistors. We had a 3 ohm, a 4 ohm, a 5 ohm. And when we connected up our circuit, we ended up getting an equivalent resistance that was a 12 ohm resistor. So if you take a look at these numbers, 3, 4, 5, if you add them up, you actually end up getting 12. So as a result of that, we can develop a conclusion from our uh, series circuit regarding our resistors. So what we want to do is develop a general equation. And we're going to use, instead of the numbers for the resistors, use RA, RB, RC. So my equivalent resistance, in other words, this REQ value, is just RA plus RB plus RC. So additive. In other words, if I want to find my equivalent resistance in a series circuit, I just add them up, add up our resistors. So we're going to start to draw some conclusions. And, and just like you saw over here, our REQ equals RA plus RB plus RC. There we go. Now what we also want to look at is what's, what are the parallels or conclusions that we can draw regarding our, our voltage and our current. So let's actually start with our current. Um, now take a little look again, and I'm actually going to move off of this for this part. Take a little look at our, our current for our, our circuits. In other words, watch how those little electrons are moving. If you notice, they're all moving in one big circle, one big loop. In fact, the electron in front of your one electron, if you kind of follow one electron, that one electron can't move any faster than the electron in front of them. I call this the conga line. You can't move any faster, so as a result, everybody moves at the same speed, or in other words, the same current, the same number of electrons per second or charge per second. So what we're noticing here is that whenever we have a series circuit, one pathway, one pathway for our electrons to go down, we actually have current staying the same. So current stays the same for that entire series circuit. Now what I want to do is see if we can take a look at what's happening for our voltage. So let's look at our voltage values. We have our voltages on our series circuit um, on the left side as 4.5, 7.5, and 6. And on the other side, we actually get a voltage drop, which is across our resistor, which is the same as our battery, which is what we'd expect when there's only one resistor. So let's take a look. We have 4.5, 6, 7.5. Huh. If you add those up, 4.5 plus 6 gives you 10.5. 10.5 plus 7.5 gives you 18. They actually all add up. Now, as a result of that, we can actually develop a general voltage equation that the voltage of our source, which is just our battery, is equal to the voltage drops across e each of our resistors, VA plus VB plus VC. As a result of that, um, we also can see some of those parallels. Now, I want to see and see if we can explain why that's the case. If you look over here, the battery is actually the thing that gives you the push. It gives you the energy that allows our, our current flow. So 
So if our, our battery's creating and generating that push, the resistors are actually using up that energy or using up that push. In other words, the, the battery push that's created and generated by the, by the battery is used up completely as the, as the electrons are flowing through the circuit. So the, the battery generates 18 volts and our circuit's resistors all use up or dissipate each of those voltage drops. Same thing here on this side. Our battery generates the 18 volts and then our resistor uses up all 18 volts as those electrons are flowing through. Now, I have one new aside that I want to bring up too. Uh, this is about a new thing called power. Uh, we talk about power, things that are powerful, um, and, and we've kind of alluded to some of these things before, but the idea of powerful is something that's able to, uh, to, to be um, generating a lot of energy or doing a lot of, of, of work in a small amount of time. We'll go into that later on in some of our, our upcoming units. But the idea is that energy over time um, is what we call power. Now, um, we actually use units then, which we'll talk more about later, is J over S are really watts. So we use a watt for our power. So think of it like a 90 watt light bulb. A 90 watt light bulb tells us about our energy and how quickly we use that energy. So in our, our unit, we actually are going to use what we call the PIV equation for power. And power can be generated by our battery. And it also can be used up by something like a light bulb or like a resistor. So we use this PIV equation. In other words, power equals current times voltage. We're going to look at what the power connection is later on too. So let's scroll down here and this is going to be our, our problem that we're going to start to work on, work on. So this is actually really similar to the first one that we did together um, in our FET demo. But now we're going to go through and we're going to work through it using calculations and using our equations. So we have our original schematic that is um, a resistor in series with a 5 ohm and 10 ohm resistor. And we want to create our equivalent resistance. So our equivalent resistor is just one single resistor connected to our 5 volt battery. Now we know um, because the conventional current has our current going um, as the proton going through the battery and up out of the positive terminal. We could draw that in. And our first thing that we want to determine then is our equivalent resistance. In other words, find this REQ value. Now because we have a series circuit, we know our REQ is just going to be adding up our resistors. So 5 ohm plus 10 ohm. So my REQ is just going to be 15 ohm, a 15 ohm resistor. Um, now what we want to do is we want to figure out about our battery, and specifically about the current running through our battery. So wherever you see this S value just means source. So the current running through our source, um, which is what we had, had um, drawn in before, we want to find that current value. Well, if we know our voltage, we know our voltage of our, our, our source, our power supply is 5 volts. We want to find our current, and we know our REQ, so we can use our VER equation. So if I know that 5 volts is my voltage of my source, and my REQ is actually going to be 15 ohms, as we found before. So when I divide my, both sides by 15, I actually get the current of my source as being 5 over 15, or 1 third of an amp. 1 third of an amp. Now, um, with that information, I now want to figure out how much power is my battery generating. And this is when we're going to use that new power equation we just developed, PIV. I'm, I'm putting the S's to show that um, with that PIV, the PIV, the power equation, power of the source of the battery equals the current through the battery and the voltage of the battery. So the power generated by my battery is going to be one third of an amp, as I found over here, times the voltage of my source, which is 5 volts. So the power of my battery then is going to be 5 over 3, and we said that watts is what we use for power. All right, so now to start to go and keep track of what's happening here, we're actually going to use this table down here, and this will help us kind of draw some conclusions about our, our battery's current and voltage. So over here we found our current through our power supply to be one-third of an amp. 
and we found the power, um, the, the power generated by our battery to be five-thirds of a watt. All right, now what I want to do is, is use this information up here to start to go and look at what's happening now through my 5-ohm resistor and through my 10-ohm resistor. So let's start over here by looking at this part of our table. We're going to look at what's happening through our 10-ohm resistor. Now before we start, it might almost seem a little overwhelming, but really what we want to do is look at what do we know about series circuits? What's true about every single series circuit? And what we figured out before was that our current stays the same. So let me actually draw that in so I can see it. There we go. So our current stays the same for the series for a series circuit. So as a result, without even doing any calculations, we know that my current is going to be one third of an amp and one third of an amp. So we know that without even having to do anything else. So now what we want to do is fill that into our org chart. We know that at, we know for all series circuits, my current is going to stay the same at one third amp. Now let's start to see if we can figure out what's going to happen when it comes to our V, our voltage, which is what this V value is, the voltage change or the voltage value. Well, we know that our V is equal to I times R. So if I want to find my voltage, and I know my current is one third of an amp, because I found that from, from up here. And if I know that's the case, let me just bring that back. If I know that's the case, I can plug that in right away times then my resistance value, which is 10. So my voltage drop across that 10 ohm resistor is just going to be 10 over 3, or 10 thirds volts. Now the power generated by my battery, we said was going to be PIV, or in this case, dissipated by my resistor, is going to be PIV. So that's going to give me a current value of 1 third, which I found from up here times my voltage, which we found to be 10 thirds from over here. So now, if I want to multiply across, do a little fraction multiplying, 1 third times 10 thirds, what we actually do is we multiply across. And if we multiply across, we end up getting 10 over 9 watts. So let's plug that in for my value here and for my, for my, uh, into my table. I found my voltage to be 10 over 3. And then my, um, my power dissipated by my battery, or sorry, by my 10 ohm resistor, we found to be 10 ninths. All right, so now let's see if we can do the same thing, but now let's look at it in terms of our 5 ohm resistor. So I'm going to use my Ver equation again to find my voltage drop. I know my current still is 1 third times my resistor of 5. So I actually get a voltage of 5 over 3 volts. And then after that, we can look at our power. That's a really bad 5 over 3. Let me rewrite that. And now what we're going to do is we're going to look at our power. Our power is going to be our PIV equation. So power is equal to one third of an amp, which we found up above, times my five volts, five or three volts. So if I use my um, fraction multiplication, I get five over nine watts. And that's our table. Now let me show you why the table is important. Now, first of all, we found our currents all to be the same. But now let's look at our volts. What we know should be true is that the voltage of your source should be equal to the voltage drops of your through to your resistors. In other words, 10 over 3 plus 5 over 3, which is equal to 15 over 3, which is the same as 5 volts. In other words, your voltage of your battery is equal to the voltages added together through your resistor. Now let's look at power. What kind of general equation or relationship can we develop for our power? Let's look. Well, okay, let's see what, what's going on with our resistor. 10 over 9 and 5 over 9. 
Let's add those up together and see what happens. We get 15 over 9, which can be simplified down to be 5 over 3 watts. And conveniently, that's exactly what our battery generated for its power. In other words, the power generated by my source, generated by my source over here, so generated by my power supply, which was the 5 thirds watts, is equal to the power that's used up by my battery. I'm sorry, by my resistors. Very similar to the idea of the voltage. If your power is generated by your battery, then your power is going to be used up by your resistors. So in other words, we have one last conclusion we can draw up here. We found that for power, the power of the source is equal to the power dissipated by each of our resistors. So make sure to write that in too. So now we've gone through this first problem, and what I'd like you to do for as, as homework and, um, before you submit is work through problem number one, which is exactly the same, but just different numbers, and problem number two. You're going to go through that same problem set, work through those values, and when you're done, submit this using the submission form, and you should be in good shape. So make sure to do that, um, and then after you're done with that, you'll be able to move on to the idea of looking at what's happening from a... Um, a, a parallel circuit standpoint. So right now we've drawn conclusions about our series. We'll go to parallel in just a little bit. Hope you're doing well.